So we've suspended alternate side many, many times in the last 10 weeks. But now we do see a number of areas in the city where some litter is starting to add up, and we're concerned. So we're going to do something a little different uh, this coming week. Alternate side will continue to be suspended this week through Sunday, through May 17th. Starting on Monday, May 18th, we're going to do a clean sweep all over the city, a catch-up to make sure neighborhoods are clean. So alternate side parking will resume on Monday, May 18th and go through uh, the end of that week. So again, one week, the week of Monday, May 18th, alternate side parking will resume just for that week. We will then suspend for the following two weeks. So be suspended again through Sunday, June 7th. Do you have an update as far you still at 38 in terms of the number of cases. And is there more information in terms of the specific ages, demographics of the patients, where those cases are located? As concerned, deeply concerned as we are, it's also important to remind everyone this is the kind of uh, situation that if it's seen and acted on quickly, uh, can be crucial in addressing this syndrome and protecting uh, a child. So early detection, early action really matters here. The number of cases, thank God, is still small. So in terms of uh, seeing demographic trends, we have a very small sample size. We mentioned a few days ago, the health department sent out uh, a HAN, a health alert to all providers to report in uh, what they were seeing about this syndrome. That is an uh, obligation. Uh, for them to report. And the guidance that we have sent out to the provider community is an individual less than 21 years of age. Um, and thus far, uh, the, the majority of children have fallen within the, like the five to nine year range, though we have certainly kids younger than that as well as older. Um, laboratory signs of inflammation, and then a single or multi-organ uh, indication of uh, failure meaning that um, their kidneys are not working, um, they're, they're going into shock, their heart is giving out. So this is uh, something obviously that is incredibly concerning because the best way to ensure that we limit the number of children that are diagnosed with uh, this uh, inflammatory uh, syndrome is to ensure the prevention, right? So it goes back to having New Yorkers stay home, continuing use of face coverings, and then early access to care if children develop these symptoms. And how much is this now being taken into consideration as part of a possible reopening of schools in the fall? And anything we do about schools is going to be led by health and safety first. That's absolutely the first question in any uh, reopening. As of this moment, we believe we can reopen schools safely and well in September, but we have to keep a very close watch on this syndrome to make sure that we attack it in every way possible in the meantime. Mayor, what is your understanding of the earliest date New York City non-essential businesses could reopen? I think it's fair to say that June is when we're potentially gonna be able to make some real changes if we can continue our progress. We're gonna always go by the data. It's been pretty good and pretty consistent. It's not quite been what we need it to be, but definitely trending in the right direction. But we need to see it sustained in a deeper way. Right now, that takes us into June. As we get close to the beginning of June, we'll be able to say if it's looking like things are really coming together, and then what are the areas where we could be, uh, begin to have some flexibility.